My dad coached them in that successful time and, uh, you know, it was very much us against them. It was play hard and play tough and probably a little socially uh, unacceptable from the gentry, if you like, that uh, sip the Chardonnay. They'd rather play nice footy, but um, Port Adelaide were all about getting the job done and uh, win at all costs. Warren Treadway. He had uh, great running ability for a tall kid, a bit skinny, probably played a bit outside for uh, what people would remember him now as. Probing kick inside the oh. Whitley and Treadway slipped, got up and still took the mark. Warren was always a, a player that wanted to be something. He didn't have to lead him very far down the track to say you want to be a star. You know, he, he certainly wanted to be that. He was born with some great attributes, but bloody hell he worked hard. He's just so single-minded to get somewhere and we want to prove to everyone that he's the best. The six game rolled into one here. The one game is going to beat the six because he's picked up his eighth goal. He got uh, injured, you know, he chipped bones off his patella and no one was quite sure whether he'd get back from that. Fred Ray, very slow to get up. He's probably had seven, eight operations on that and each one of them was a, a setback, but no, uh, no way was it going to stop him. Treadray, and Porter back in it. Treadray, he's a shame. Can he get a confidence booster here? He goes with the banana. I remember at training, I would tell the players, don't kick the ball to him today at training, because every time we did a uh, full-length drill, the ball would go to him. It was probably at the detriment of some of the other players. He wanted to get upset that the ball wasn't coming. He wanted every ball his way. You know, there was one game, and I think it was against Richmond, actually. He marked one to get us in front, probably for the first time of the day, and then just took himself down the other end of the ground. The clearance was won by Richmond, and it went forward to, into their forward line deep, and who marked the ball? Warren Treadray. And I thought, well, he, he really is a leader now. Listen to that roar! And his work ethic and his running ability was such, every time the ball came his way, he could get it, he, he could be involved. In 2004, he took a shot from right out in the boundary, probably 50 metres, and nailed it. And I think it really settled our side down. So, you know, those sort of things stick in my mind. It was one of the great, great fun times to, uh, to be back at Alberton with the Cup. They introduced all the players, increasing number order or something to finally get to Warren and by that time it had just built up and built up and you know who we waiting for and the way they went the crowd. It was just a fun time to be there and see it. Played all my life since uh, under eight to achieve something like tonight and tonight it's come together. Warren led by example. He would play to the last second on the clock and it would be, uh, you know, watch what I'm doing and follow me type thing. He won't miss. Ah, that's why he's got that number one, Dennis. Absolutely. Port Adelaide, you wear number one as the captain and he sits nicely with his name on that locker with uh, not very many players ever to wear number one, to be captain of Port Adelaide. He's certainly up there with the, uh, the names on that locker. For a marking forward, he's had the most influence, I think, of any Port Adelaide player, that's for sure. Coaches can say what they like, but the players have to deliver it on the field, and that's what Warren did. Was there an element of destiny about this, Warren, as the kid who grew up running up and down the stands at Elberton? If you asked me that in 202 or 203 when we choked in the finals, no. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. It's in hindsight, and um, you often think about it in these situations, in my career it was all about next thing. You know, win a premiership and all Australian or play well, what's next week? There's another person, I saw him beat someone else and there was another challenge awaiting and, and I've probably got to thank Mark for that and uh, the other person is Dad. We're always never happy. And, and not to say that it was never happy or never thankful, but it was almost, the, the mark of a professional sportsman is to deliver time and time again. Did you enjoy it? And particularly 2004, which you talk about two and three, and it's burnt into the psyche, but it happened in 2004. I enjoy it now. Yep. At the time, you enjoy it, you celebrate. 
back then there was no Federation Square, it was the Punt Road, so we saw the vision then. That felt like three minutes. I think we waited for hot chips out the back longer than this presentation, it felt like. Uh, we did the lap of honour at the MCG, that felt like three minutes. Um, that's what football does to you because there is always a new challenge. The day the team wins the Premiership, the other teams are already planning for next year. And that's the bit that you can't sit back and smell the roses and that's something that you're privileged at in nights like this where I never thought I'd be in this situation to get something so unbelievable because I grew up watching Wayne Carey and Dunstall and Lockett and Steve Kernahan in the state games and at Carlton, all these players, Gary Ablett, and now I sit there as I'm a forward and I don't think I'm at their level, but you sit there and go, wow. But from the Port Adelaide perspective, it's, really, it's a really heartfelt thing because my 14 year football career manager, Jeff Motley, is also inducted as a player. So that means a lot. But yeah, it's, 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 yeah it's, it's, a real, it's an interesting situation and you don't get to sit back and enjoy it until it's done. And your deep connection to the club uh, has lasted long after your playing days. As I know you haven't said this publicly before, but when the club was on the rack and you felt that the doors might in fact be shut, uh, you were proactive behind the scenes. You rang the AFL, you wanted to know what could be done. And in a way, that, that's led us to where we are now. It was Chad Corns, uh, I was commentating for Triple M footy and uh, doing them, some of the media work I do. And uh, it was quarter time, it was Chad Corns' last game for Port Adelaide before he obviously went up to GWS. And I hope Andrew doesn't mind it, but it's his last day, hopefully he can't get me tomorrow. Um, and I emailed or text messaged Patrick Kane at quarter time. The score was 10 goals, five roundabouts to no score. My team was a no score. They're playing the reigning premiers. And I text and said, can I potentially speak to the big boss? And I uh, just want to rest, I suppose, you know, my feelings, because I thought we were gone. And uh, Andrew did, it was great, took my call, spoke to him late at night, and uh, we just spoke about what he was going to do for Port Adelaide. And you know, it was, you know, help them with some funds to, you know, spend into their football club instead of cut, 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 like we've all done for various reasons for finances. And you know, the fans weren't coming. But really, that was the moment for me that was like, hang on, I know there's something good. Uh, maybe a thank you or two. I'll start with my wife, who uh, has put up with, talk about some people, teammates might have thought I was hard work, geez, try being my wife. So to Rach, who's my best mate and who's been through all the ups and downs, thank you very much. To mum and dad, um, who started you know, the football journey with me. Mark Williams, thanks Chop, you're a champion. I know we butted heads a lot, but we got the best out of ourselves. I saw a little bit of a um, tribute before to the late Dean Bailey. Um, if you realise how important footy is, it's not that important compared to, you know, to life. And we lost a great person and a great soldier and someone who touched many football clubs in our industry. Um, if there's one thing I always wanted to do was get my name in a locker at Alberton, and that's 100 games. You dream of then winning a premiership, I was lucky to do that, but this is really just the cherry on top. So thank you very much. And uh, to a couple of former premiership teammates who are in this room, uh, to Josh Marnie and to Damien Hardwick, thank you for being great teammates. So thank you.